I do read and reply to as many comments as I can, but it is getting more difficult as the volume increases, but I find a huge inspiration in the comments for future videos. It also allows me to target those future videos to subjects that I know are of interest to you. Well, from this week's comments, we're going to have a Q&A session. I'm going to start with, is any thought being given to disabled drivers in a wheelchair? A number of viewers have asked me this. And yes, I admit I've not really been looking in the past. I have quite enough to do with charging and eating and filming, but recently I have made an effort to look. And good news, I recently saw a new Apple Green installation in progress. Charger's not yet installed, and I asked the foreman about this specifically. He replied that the entire charger location was on a single level. No curbs, no platforms or anything. Everything was dead level. And my filming and photos do confirm this. I asked about the bump stop ramps to stop cars reversing into the charger and was told these were as narrow as possible and the bays, all of which are wider than normal, well, two separate bays are specifically designed for disabled, are wider even still. I was assured that there'd be no issue with wheelchair users. There's plenty of space between the bumps to get your wheelchair. Your requests appear to have been answered. My EV gave me a much greater range and quicker charging over the summer, but it's now slowing down again. Now it's getting colder. Is there anything I can do? Oh, well, that's a great question. The answer is yes and no. First, the battery is an incredible device that uses a chemical reaction to store energy and release it in electricity on request. In physics and chemistry at school, I was taught that all reactions happen quicker and more efficiently at high temperatures. So your battery works better when nice and warm, around about 40 degrees centigrade. That's about the temperature of a really hot shower. When you're driving, your battery does produce heat as it releases electricity to the motors, so a reasonable drive will see the battery get quite warm all on its own, except for those really bitterly cold days. But of course, leave your car overnight and it cools down to ambient temperature. And that means when you set off on a really cold day, the battery can be very cold and therefore not efficient. And the car will operate heaters, if it has any, to try to warm it up while you're driving. This uses energy. Well, instead, again, if you have it, program your car to pre-warm before you set off. Set the cabin temperature to maybe 18 or 20 degrees C. And unknown to many people, this will also preheat your battery. On mine, I have a timer, so I can actually set my departure time. And both the car and the battery will be at the ideal temperature when I leave. Well, likewise, when heading for a charger out on the road, always use the preconditioning feature if you have one. It is kinder, less damaging to your battery, and it will give you a quicker charge. What is the best state of charge to charge to? Oh, there's so much confusing advice around this. A number of you have asked this and it's a common subject. And unfortunately, there's no single answer. First, what type of driving do you do? Are you commuting every weekday? Do you go on long road trips? Can you charge at home or at work? So let's try to simplify this. First, check what type of battery you have. There are just two types, commonly. Uh, an NMC, which has higher power density, and it's used on most mid-range and top-range cars. And an LFP, which has lower power density and is generally used on the base models. But I have to say, even this is changing, with LFP energy density now increasing with improved chemistry. Well, your handbook or dealer will advise you which you have. Let's look at LFP first. Well, these love, absolutely love being charged to 100%. Indeed, they need to be charged to 100% regularly, say once a week. But this does not mean you have to charge to 100% every time you charge. Obviously, if you can charge at home, just set your charge rate to 100%. And that's absolutely fine and simple. But out on the road, if you just need a top-up at a public charger to get to your destination or get home, then just do a top-up. It's quicker and easier. It's probably an awful lot cheaper if you do charge at home to get home to do your main top-up. Now, NMC batteries do not like being charged to 100%. Totally the opposite. So these are best kept between about 50% and 75% on a regular basis. 
If you do charge at home, set 75% as your normal state of charge, if you do a reasonable mileage, and 50% if you do a low mileage. The final thought, neither battery type really likes going down to 0%. So for both types, avoid this where possible. But remember, both batteries can happily go to 100% and down to 0% if the situation warrants it. Once in a while, it's not really going to do any harm to your battery. Should I charge to 100% before setting off on a road trip? Ha, not normally, and I don't, and I do regular long road trips. Well, my car has a range of about 200, 250 miles, depending on the season and how I drive. If my journey is, say, 260 miles, topping it up to 100% will not get me there. And 260 miles will probably take about three to four hours of driving, if the roads are clear, five to six if they're really busy. I cannot drive for five or six hours without a break. So I know in advance I'm going to stop anyway. And if the stop is around lunchtime, I know I'm going to be stopping for maybe 30 minutes or longer anyway. So I just make sure I have enough state of charge to get me there easily, allowing for any detours and delays, and that might be 75 or 80% on a long trip. I'll arrive at my first charging destination for lunch with the battery maybe 20% left. And then it will top back up to 80%, 75, 80, 90, whatever you're doing. And that might take 20 or 30 minutes. So I can take a very leisurely lunch and have a charged battery when I set off. Well, I'm always in a rush. Is it quicker to charge to 100% or stop more often? Well, this is a great question and one I covered in a video a long while ago. Your battery charges fastest when it's almost empty and slowest when it's almost full. We all know this. Up to about 75, 80%, it's really quick. Then it really slows down to a crawl and the last 5% takes forever. For pure speed, two or three stops, when the battery drops to about 20%, Topping it back up to 50 or 60 percent will give a much quicker journey time than waiting ages at one stop for it to reach a hundred percent in a single session. Just ask Formula One drivers, they regularly do two or three stops on softer tyres rather than one stop on hard tyres. Try it for yourself, you might be surprised. We want to thank you for watching our long cast, Dave takes it on. Like and subscribe to follow along